Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns and Guitars, and I've got a really cool project that I am working on today. If you've been following my channel, a couple years ago, I made a video on long range shooting featuring a Bushnell optic, and using uh, my buddy, who's a professional long range shooter and his equipment, we were able to ring steel out to 900 yards. And ever since then, I've had it in the back of my mind that I want to get into the precision shooting sport. The only problem is it's not really a budget friendly sport. So I've had it lingering in the back of my head over the last two years, how I can build a budget friendly rifle that's capable of shooting accurately out to 500 yards and beyond. And that's what I have right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is a rifle that I essentially found at a garage sale for $50, but it's got the heart of a champion. It uh, needs a lot of work, but I think I can get this thing ringing steel beyond 500 yards for less than $1,000. We'll see. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, let's get started. I know this thing has the heart of a champion. It is a Ruger American Predator 308. And as you can see, it's missing the takedown screw. That is one of the reasons why he sold it to me so cheap. Uh, two, he had some fun trying to mill out the bolt. And as you can see, it does look very cool. But I think the milling machine might have gotten away from him and he had to patch this spot. So that looks really ugly. And uh, we got some discoloration there from either the welder or from rust. This thing is supposed to not come out unless you press this button right here. But the problem is if you just jiggle it, it will come out. So <laughs> the bolt has some issues uh, that we may or may not address. We'll see. Also, the scope mount rail, uh, one of the torque screws has the bit broken off inside, so this is now officially permanently attached. And we've had a home brew Cerakote job done. Okay, we got OD green, and then except for this muzzle brake up here is FDE. And if I can get kind of close up on here, you can see this is a homemade muzzle brake, and I'm not sure how well it works, but I kind of like it. It's very minimalistic. And if it works, I'm just going to leave it. But if you look really closely, you can see that the uh, muzzle brake holes actually go beyond where the threaded barrel is. You can actually see a couple of the barrel threads sticking out through there. So how am I gonna turn this piece of junk into a long range precision rifle? Well, I think if we can give it a budget friendly trigger job, we can set it up with a nice budget friendly chassis system to properly float the barrel. And then if we put on a nice budget friendly long range first focal plane optic, I think we might be able to actually ring steel out to 500 yards. And that's my goal with this rifle. The furthest that I have ever rang steel was 460 yards and it wasn't even with my rifle. There you go. That was a hit. Yep. I got it. So if I can exceed that with this rifle, then I know that I'm on the right track and maybe in the right hands, this thing might even be capable of shooting beyond that. And that's something that we'll test a little bit later down the road. So first things first, I'm going to be polishing up this bolt, seeing if I can't clean it up a little bit better. And I gotta do something about this nasty Cerakote job. So in fact, that might be the first thing that I do is I'm going to go ahead and hit this thing with some high temperature ceramic paint. I know that Cerakote or gun coat is really what you want, but I've had good success using the high temperature bacon paints and they will wear out over time. But actually what I'm hoping for is that it will wear down beautifully and show some of this OD green and FDE through it. I think that'll look really cool. But firstly, let's just go ahead and make the whole thing matte black. All right, real quick before we hit this with the paint, we're gonna wipe it down with some alcohol, make sure there's no dirt or grease or oils or anything that's gonna prevent that paint from sticking properly. Here, look at that. Right, so this is the stuff I'm using, Rust-Oleum High Heat Ceramic Matte Black. And this first coat is just gonna be a dusting. It's what we call a tack coat. That'll help the rest of the coats stick a little bit better. That's it for the first one. We'll just let that cook for about an hour in the sun. All right, that's about five really light tack coats. Now we're gonna lay it on thick.
And now I'm going to install this cheap $9 trigger spring kit that I got on eBay, which should, in theory, knock the stock three and a half pound to five pound trigger pull down to a one and a half to two pound trigger pull. So we'll see how accurate that is. All right, well, that was surprisingly easy. It would have taken me less than five minutes except for I lost one of my spring clips and spent the last 40 minutes scouring the ground to find it. But I found it and... Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. That's a big improvement. All right, now for the piece of gear that I am the most excited about, this is my chassis system. It is made by Oryx, and Oryx is actually owned by MDT that makes the really high-end custom chassis. And got a magazine there for it. Got some butt plate extension spacers, so it's fully adjustable. Got the adjustable cheek weld, sling swivel stud. We got some M-lock sections down there at the bottom for installing a bipod or other accessories. And the cool thing about the Oryx is, like I said, it's made by MDT which MDT, their basic rifle chassis system starts at about $500, I think. But it doesn't include a buttstock, a pistol grip, or really anything else. And so here we have a chassis system that includes everything, like ready to go, ready to drop your action in, ready to shoot. And I believe these go currently for $429. I know I've seen them as low as $399. I believe that was the price when I got this. So anyway, I'm very excited for it. This is definitely the most budget friendly and like I said, made by MDT. And so you're getting MDT quality on a really respectable budget. So let's go ahead and get this thing installed. I'm very excited. Perfect. A cool little optional upgrade is you can take these little set screws out and replace them with thumb screws so you can kind of make adjustments on the fly a little bit easier. Now I can adjust my cheek weld on the fly without any tools. Perfect. All right. And now I've got this ultra light carbon fiber bipod from CV Life. So let's go ahead and stick this on our sling stud here. All right. Now I am very excited with how this build is coming along, but we're missing one extremely important thing. You can't shoot 500 yards if you can't see 500 yards. And that's where the Bushnell Match Pro comes in. Now this is the only optic that I could find that had 24 times magnification with a first focal plane reticle under $1,000. And even still, it's way under $1,000. This thing comes in at just $500. So this is by far the most expensive part of the build, um, but I think that's necessary when you're shooting at these distances. Okay, you know me, I will cheap out on optics all day, every day, if it means that I can spend more money on ammo for practice. But I think for something like this, where I'm gonna be sending less rounds down range, and more importantly, I need to be able to see where they're landing. Kind of splurged a little bit, but even still, it's not really splurging if it's like literally the cheapest one that you can get. So we'll see how well it does. Now these scope rings are UTG. They are extremely budget friendly and they are built very ruggedly. I've always been very happy with the quality that I get from UTG. Well, I could have reached out to someone, I'm sure, and gotten some more expensive or higher quality ones. Because I'm keeping this a budget build and I stand behind my own philosophy, I went ahead and decided I'm just gonna keep using UTG stuff. So here we go, got a little bit of Loctite on those. Just a tad beyond snug. Some Loctite, that should be perfect. All right, last thing I'm gonna do, just gonna polish up this bolt a little bit. So that looks only about a million times better. 
Let's go ahead and stick it back in, and I think it's time to take it to the range. Whoa, that trigger caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> Windage is perfect, elevation's a little high. First two are in the same hole. Let's see if I can land the third one in the same hole. That would be wonderful. I don't know if that's the same hole, but if not, it's awfully close. So this is our first group we have here, the Range Master line. This is nothing special, just actually the cheapest 308 that I could find with a brass case online. It's a 145 grain bullet. It shot a pretty dang good group, so let's go have a look. Oh, it looks like it's just barely not touching. So first two in the same hole, third one right there. You know, for cheap ammo, that's pretty freaking good. So up next, we got some Federal Premium Gold Metal Match Grade Ammo. It's got Sierra Match Kings 168 grain. So I want to shoot the Match Grade stuff before I get too fatigued, because I have a feeling this is going to be the most consistent. Again, I got two in the same hole. If I can put a third one there. Ah, just barely out of it. So now we're gonna use, again, Federal Premium Gold Medal, Sierra Match Kings uh, 175 grain. Yeah, I think this thing doesn't necessarily like the heavier bullets. It's still a sub MOA group, but it's just, it's bigger than the others so far. Since it seems to like the lighter bullets, we're going to try next the Winchester, this is just M80 white box ammo, 149 grain. It's about two MOA. <laughs> That's not so good. Here we've loaded up with Federal Power Shock, 150 grain. This is hunting ammo. I don't expect it to be awesome, but it did pretty good in my AR-10. That one's not great either. Maybe one and a half MOA. Now we have Winchester Super X, PowerPoint, 150 grain ammo. Again, it's hunting ammo. I don't expect to be awesome in this, but it did well in my AR. Yep, nope, that's another two MOA spread. I think it's safe to say that this rifle is definitely capable of what I was hoping it would be capable of. Uh, two groups of 0.62 inches using just factory ammo. Those are the best 100 yard groups that I've shot ever, to my knowledge. I don't think I've ever been inside of three quarters of an inch at 100 yards. And so I'm obviously very jazzed about this. And the two types of ammo that shot the best were lighter weight projectiles and boat tail projectiles. So that gives me a really good idea of what other match grade ammo to be looking at to try out as well as a good starting point for when I wanna start hand loading for this thing. I think by dialing in some quality hand loads, we can get inside a half an inch, no problem. And with that kind of accuracy, I don't think we'll have any problems ringing steel way out to a thousand yards. Now this video isn't a full review of all the accessories here. I'm actually gonna do individual reviews of those down the road, but I only have about 35 rounds through this thing as of now. And I just didn't think that that qualified me to give these things a full in-depth test and review. So obviously those videos are gonna come a bit later, you know, a full review of the Oryx chassis and the Bushnell Match Pro, but I wanna get some more rounds way down range before I feel qualified to do those videos. So the next video in this series is gonna be me stretching out how far I can shoot this thing. So make sure you're subscribed. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you in that next video.